Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Success Insight podcast. Today's episode of Success Insight is another addition to our Outdoor Adventure Series. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration of the great outdoors. Our guests today are Barbara Ann Mojica and her husband, Victor Mojica. Barbara Ann is the creator and author of the award-winning Little Miss History book series. Little Miss History is a whimsical character Barbara uses to narrate her books. And with this series, Barbara hopes to educate, entertain, and inspire children to learn about historical people and places. The design and illustrations for the book series were produced by her husband, Victor. Barbara Ann and Victor joined us in 2020 when we first were introduced to the Little Miss History series, and we were excited when we launched the Outdoor Adventure series because we invited Barbara Ann and Victor back on to talk about a book that fit really nicely into the series, Little Miss History, Travels to Sequoia National Park. We're going to provide backlinks to the first episode and to this last episode about Sequoia National Park. But in today's episode for the Outdoor Adventure Series, we're going to chat about another book that too fits very nicely, and it's Little Miss History Travels to Mount Rushmore. So without further ado, Barbara Ann Victor, welcome back to the Success Insight Podcast and the Outdoor Adventure Series. Hello. Hi, Howard. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I feel like we're really, we're we're like almost like adopted family. I feel like I see you and talk to you guys so much. And I'm very appreciative that you're willing to come back on the podcast. Hopefully it's been a good experience for you. It certainly has been enjoyable for me. Oh yeah. It's great to be here. You're a great guy, Howard. Thank you so much. Well, let's talk about Little Miss History Travels to Mount Rushmore. And I have to admit, I know about Mount Rushmore. I've seen it in pictures. I've never seen it in person, which is something I need to take care of. But when you were beginning the Little Miss History book series, as I understand it, Little Miss History Travels to Mount Rushmore was your first book. Yes, it was. How did you decide to start on Little Miss History Travels to Mount Rushmore? Well, we were looking for iconic places that we thought families would enjoy visiting together because part of the focus of the book series is not only to make children and families more aware of historic and cultural heritage, but to get them immersed in actually becoming a part of our history, more actively involved. We thought that this would be a site that would appeal to all ages and uh, to families uh, in particular. Of course, it's an out-of-the-way place, and it isn't close to any major city. So that's probably the reason why about 3 million people visit every year. But its location is a little bit out of the way. I mean, it, it Minneapolis and Denver are probably the two closest large cities. I think Denver's close to 400 miles away and Minneapolis almost 600. That's a day's drive. Yeah, a a long day's drive with a family. (laughs) With a family, because, you know, it's such an iconic site. And I know that folks who are making the trek out west, especially as they go the northern route, will want to visit Mount Rushmore. And I have to admit, too, is I go back and I start to research and prepare for the episode is so much about Mount Rushmore I was not aware of. And I wonder if perhaps you can fill in a little bit of those gaps to share with our listeners. But then let's go into the book and how the book and its imagery and the words are used, consumed by young kids to get them interested in places and in history like this. There's a lot of backstory. There were a lot of people that were involved, a lot of detail involved, back and forth with Congress and and the funding people don't know about. I mean, it might be more interested to adults rather than kids. This is a picture book, and it intends to hit the highlights of why you should be interested in a particular place or person. And it doesn't include a lot of the backstory, but actually 
the very, very first person who was involved in Mount Rushmore was a, a state historian. Uh, his name was Dwayne Robinson, and he wanted to attract tourism to the area because, not, again, not too many people visited uh, the Dakotas. And he looked around at the mountains and said, oh, gee, it would be great to have some huge carvings. And originally, the idea was maybe for some interesting shapes, but he had the idea of maybe including the Sioux tribal chief. He thought, who could he get to do something like this project? And he found this Danish sculptor, Gutzen Borglum, who eventually did come on to the project. He was doing a carving of Jefferson on Stone Mountain in Georgia. So he contacted him and he, he tried to get him interested in the project. And of course, the next step was trying to get funding. And they went back and forth with that. And Borglum was interested in doing the project. But they didn't know, again, who was going to be involved in the carvings. And it was uh, Borglum who eventually came up with the four presidents of Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and, and Theodore Roosevelt. But he originally thought only two. He was really interested in the history of the United States, even though he was a Danish immigrant. He has all kinds of interesting background as well. He grew up as a Mormon and he lived all over the West. And then he went to Paris to study sculpture and, and, and came back. But Borglum chose, eventually chose the four because he, he thought Washington was the founder of the country. And Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence and, and through the Louisiana Purchase, he doubled the area. So he was responsible for the growth of the country. And, and then Lincoln, of course, for preserving the country getting us back together after the Civil War. And Roosevelt, because he was so much involved in the economic growth and changing the country, dissolving the big trusts and and promoting the rights of the working men and so on. They wound up as the four. But it was interesting to note also that the grandson of Dakota Sioux, chief of the Ogala Sioux, he wrote to Borglum and asked him to include him in the monument, and Borglum never even answered him. Wow. It brings up a question of mine. Now, I know the Mount Rushmore is part of the National Park Service. Is it also on Sioux land, or is it separate? Well, that whole area was originally Sioux land, and the land was actually given back to the Sioux tribe in 1868. Okay. I mentioned this in the book uh, so that the kids are aware of it. And then we had the famous Custer battle with the big horn. Right. After that, they took it back. So oh, they, <laughs> in, yeah, talk about, uh, so the government took it back and uh, in 1876. So it was their land. And, it, and in fact, part of their sacred tribal lands that the mountain was originally called Six Grandfathers by the Sioux. Right. Okay. So how does Little Miss History explore Mount Rushmore? What are some of the key features within the book for Little Miss History? We try to make children aware of the scale. Uh, and again, that, that was another thing that was changed because uh, Borglum ran out of funds And that was partially his fault because when Congress allocated the money, he only took half of the money initially. And then, of course, he never got the rest. So (laughs) I'm sensing there's a pattern here, Barbara. (laughs) Yeah, there is. He intended to build the sculptures from the waist up. But because he didn't run out of money, he wound up only doing the heads, which are 60 feet tall. There's a picture of that in the book. Yeah, the scale. The scale is interesting, too. Uh, because we try to sh- give children an idea of the scale, uh, that they're, they're scaled to a person who would be a 465 feet tall. So we show them a, a tiny picture of Little Miss History, the character who, who guides them through the adventure, and, and then the actual size. Wow. You know, it's, it's interesting. You go to the U.K., or at least for me, one of the most iconic places I wanted to visit was Stonehenge. I was wowed by it. And perhaps you you and Victor have been there, but it's just, you know, you could just sit there and just 
meditate, just take it all in. And I do hear people say in Stonehenge, oh, it's not as impressive as I thought it was going to be. There's better places, yada, yada, yada. What are people's reactions, or perhaps even what was Little Miss History's reactions to seeing Mount Rushmore? I mean, 60 feet tall, these heads, that's pretty huge. Well, I've got her climbing all over the faces on a rope. Yeah. To show you the sizes of the features, the nose, the mouth, the eyes. Oh, wow. Now, I I remember seeing some pictures years ago. There's actually a group of individuals that maintain the site and even the sculptures themselves. And I know I could have sworn there was like a tree or a branch growing out of like Lincoln's nose at one time. I don't, I could be wrong, but I just seem to recall that. So you've got Little Miss History. She's showing the scale of the sculpture. She's climbing, which probably was a pretty interesting climb. What else is Little Miss History doing? Well, she's showing you the hidden, uh, uh, what do they call it? The, like, the, uh, in uh, the Hall of Records. Of Records, there's a hidden room behind Mount Rushmore. Oh, really? Uh, it's called the Hall of Records. It's actually in a valley behind the room. And the, again, that was Borglum's vision and his dream. But he was never able to finish it because two years before he died, they stopped the funding, Congress said they could only use the funds for the actual sculptures. And they didn't want the Hall of Records included in that. Now, this Hall of Records was originally going to be a huge room with glass doors, a ma- massive cutting into the rock. And inside this room, he wanted to preserve a history of what was at that time the first 150 years of our history. So he was going to place uh, copies of the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, biographies of the four presidents who were carved on the mountain, and his own biography was to be included. Of course. And uh, all of that was going to be in a teakwood box uh, so that it would be preserved forever. But they said no more funding for that. So he, the last two years of his life, he ran around trying to solicit extra funds, but he wasn't able to get it. So the project kind of remained undone. But finally, in 1998, they opened what had been done. And it's a scaled down version, you know, of what he originally intended. But the Teakwood box is there with the copies of those documents. Uh, And again, it's kind of hard to access and and the general visitors aren't able to to access it. Wow. Boy, now I know as you travel up to the site, Mount Rushmore, there's the flags of the United States. And so what else is Little Miss History doing while she's there? Uh, She's showing you a fictional grave site, and she's telling us no one died during the whole time of construction. Yes, not one worker lost his life. And there were 506 workers every day uh, going up and down. On ropes and all kinds of climbing devices. 506. Wow. You can't say that with like Boulder Dam or Hoover Dam. I mean, this man, but I mean, this, the site is massive. I mean, the, the rock face is just very interesting. And, you know, the fact that they're there. And so, what else is a Little Miss History exploring while she's in the area? She carves a likeness of Borglum, she carves a, a bust of him so you can see what he looked like instead of just drawing him outright. Yeah, and and Borglum, now they they did renovations recently, the National Park Service, and and, and that was part of FDR's little legacy in in the project. He he took the control from the government, and and he he eventually, during the 30s, he allowed for a, a part of his New Deal program, a lot of of extra attention and focus was put on it. And he's, he transferred it to the National Park Service so that it, it became less tied to the government and more of a an open and, and free type of monument and it encouraged more people to visit it. 
But now, uh, as part of the reservation, there's a little museum for Borglum that highlights uh, his contributions to it. And they're still working on that. They completed the first part of the renovations. Now they're working, I think, more on the roadways and the access points to get there. Very good. Well, you know, I, I noticed, you know, from the book pages on Amazon, and, and I know the book is available on, on your website, and I will share that link in, in a minute, but it's gotten some really nice reviews. I mean, this for your your first book, you know, can you recall some of the, you know, whether it's, you know, mom and dad or teachers or kids, what's been the reaction to this book? And, and also the fact that this was your, your first book introducing readers to Little Miss History. I think parents and teachers alike likes the approach of the book being highly visual and using the character as a guide, which makes it more appealing to children, someone just like themselves. And the way that the information was portrayed, like we mentioned scaling it, and, and I kind of do that in the Statue of Liberty book also. And Victor, of course, had a lot of yeah, input. Little Miss does the same thing there. She scales the statue, which involves her at the same time giving you the details and but the facts about it. When you show close Very up, cool. you show an eye of one of the sculptures and then tell them that it's 11 feet across. And then you show the nose and you tell them that it's 20 feet long. Uh, and then the... Like my nose. The, the <laughs> it's like mine as well, Victor. We, we, <laughs> um, the, a mouth 18 feet wide, they're better able to visualize the massiveness. Because even when you go there, of course, you can't get up that close to see. So you can't really appreciate the magnitude of it unless you zoom in on each of your features. You know what I'm curious about as I see Mount Rushmore is how it's oriented by direction. So like, you know, with the Outdoor Adventure Series, you know, part of the joy of it is I get to also explore my own surroundings here out west and I go out to the parks and look at the Milky Way, take pictures of the Milky Way. But I'm wondering, gee, I wonder how it's situated in, during some time of the year. Could I get a picture of Mount Rushmore with the Milky Way rising in the background? But I'll figure that one out. But it just, that's what, as I'm looking at the pictures and, you know, seeing the, the book cover, Little Miss History, you know, visits Mount Rushmore, travels to Mount Rushmore. I'm like, oh, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder. I, I know for, I know for me, I want to get out there and visit. And I think, you know, books like Little Miss History and the Travels to Mount Rushmore or any of the other sites is just, it's a um, kind of a stepping stone as you had your desire to help kids understand history and to be able to explore it and learn more about it through these books. Most of the book is illustrated, yeah. but there's two interesting pictures in it, you yeah. know, actual photographs. And one is, is the uh, picture of the initial construction of Thomas Jefferson on the, if you're looking at the head of George Washington, originally they began carving Jefferson's head to the right of uh, George Washington's head. But that part of the mountain proved to be uh, unstable and, and prone to cracking. So they moved the head to the other side. And there's a picture of the, the uh, initial construction of Jefferson's head next to George Washington's. And the other picture is how the mountain looked before they carved the four heads, what it actually looked like. I mean, the mountain itself is impressive. I mean, there's the remaining elements to it, you know, off to the right of, of Lincoln. Let, let's just hope, I mean, my mind uh, without, you know, I guess it's probably not politically uh, neutral, but I hope it stays just the four and that's it, you know, no more. Yeah, well, that's always something up for debate, but it, I, it, it's always interesting. I do bring in, of course, the Native American rights, which is something that a lot of people who read and reviewed the book were also very interested to find out about. And um, I think I mentioned that originally the grandson of uh, Crazy Horse, the Ogala Sioux Chief, 
uh, asked Borglum to include him, and he never even got a reply. But that, which never dropped, the Native American descendants always kept pressure on. In 1971, they seized control uh, of the Mount Rushmore Memorial temporarily, which didn't last very long, obviously. But they made their point were very well known that this was their land, their tribal mountain. And that got indigenous rights activists to become more aware again. And even it was brought to the UN and, and there's the UN has a uh, indigenous rights person and a delegate. Um, and it was, I think, 2012, James Anaya, who was then the representative, actually said we should give the land back. So um, that's probably not going to be the solution. But the Native Americans went uh, went ahead, another relative, uh, another grandson, hired a sculptor, and they're building their own monument, which you've probably heard of the Crazy Horse Memorial. Sure, yeah, yeah. And this one's going to be much, much larger than Mount Rushmore. And they're, they're building it on... Uh, a mountain called Thunder Mountain. Uh, it's about 17 miles away from Mount Rushmore. And uh, on that mountain, they're carving a, a sculpture of Crazy Horse riding on his horse with his hair blowing in the wind, and he's pointing to the tribal lens. And this is going to be so huge. It, it's taken years uh and it, they're not using any kind of government funding they're only using private funds they hired the sculptor i cannot say his name his, the sculptor <laughs> is uh, it's i'm probably butchering it but it's something <laughs> like ziokowski uh and his whole family seven members of his family have been involved in in the actual carving and the whole thing it's going to be his arm is going to be 263 feet long wow and his head is going to be uh, 87 feet wow so that's you know talk about scale that that's going to be huge that's going to be huge and they're going to build a whole eventually uh, a satellite yeah. educational and cultural center uh, aligned with the University of South uh, Dakota. Uh, and it, it it should be magnificent. Um, yeah, I, I know I've seen some uh, pictures of it, you know, at, at the stage that it's in right now. So definitely, you know, hopefully in our lifetime, we'll be able to go out and visit it. I mean, I know I definitely want to go out and visit Mount Rushmore and I uh, appreciate, you know, books like yours are, you know, a, a hopefully a stepping stone for people like me, for parents to take their kids out and, and go exploring, which in my mind, this is why this was a great addition to the Outdoor Adventure Series. Now, before we head out, I know we're going to come on and do one more podcast together. Where are we going to visit next? Tombstone, Arizona. Tombstone is, is a old mining town. They're still remains of some of the mines there uh, has a very interesting history connected with Native American residents. The immigrants who settled in the town were from all over and there were a lot of Chinese immigrants. There you know, were outlaws because it was so close to Mexico. So it was natural for cattle stealing. Right. Uh, and all of the characters that came to the town, because it was a, a boom and bust town, uh, it grew from like 100 to 14,000 in, in, in a couple of years. It's a part of the um, cultural history of the wild, wild west, it's the famous gunfight at the OK Corral, Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Holliday, uh, and all of the... Uh, colorful places uh there was a there was even an opera hall uh, for for those who could afford it uh gambling dancing of course no tv which i I mean introduces children 
to uh, a lifestyle that was that's very very different from their from their own today. Well, let's uh, hold off on sharing too much of that because we'll explore that on our next episode. But definitely another opportunity to learn about a, a place some of us maybe hadn't even thought about going. But definitely like Mount Rushmore, it's a place to to visit even for an adult like me and wanting to, to kind of see this site in person. So Barbara Ann and Victor, it's a pleasure to have you both on Success Insight and really love that you're able to share this book, Little Miss History Travels to Mount Rushmore and share a little bit about the background. And for parents, you know, definitely go out and perhaps put Mount Rushmore on your list, uh, places to visit. If there is a silver lining with COVID, it's enabled parents to start to think about getting out and exploring in a very safe way. So we appreciate that. Barbara, before we head out, where are the best places for our listeners to go if they would like to learn more about you and your work and Victor, of course, and his work? My website, littlemisshistory.com. I have all of my contacts there, my YouTube channel, my, my blog, sample pages of the book, where to buy it. Uh, it can be found on Amazon, Barnes & Noble Online, IndieBound, Bookshop.org virtually any uh, in independent uh, bookstore outlet on the website. I do a lot of education for children and parents as well. I, you know, I have a lot of videos on my YouTube. I review family-friendly books. So I'm totally involved with children and their interest in their past. And I, I try to explain to children that we're all characters in history because we all have a part of it. It's not just about huge events like government and world history. Very much. And Victor, where are our listeners going to go and learn more about you? Because you're the illustrator extraordinaire here. So where are you going to send our listeners to? Well, right now I'm illustrating uh, Barbara's books. And personally, I'm writing a screenplay based on my comic books. Okay. Uh, Eugenics. That's a struggle in and of itself. Very difficult. Very difficult. It's the hardest thing uh, that I've ever done is writing a screenplay. Wow. Well, you, you both are definitely keeping very busy and producing some wonderful works of literature and you know, really helping to educate kids. And, and again, thank you so much for joining us on Success Insight and contributing to the Outdoor Adventure Series. As, and as usual, it's been fantastic to catch up with you on a Saturday morning and looking forward to having you on another episode where we get introduced to Little Miss History and Tombstone, Arizona. So looking forward to that. All you got to do is call. We'll be here for you. All right. Anytime. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, folks. We have just been chatting with Barbara Ann Mojica and her husband, Victor Mojica. Barbara Ann is the author of the Little Miss History book series. And in today's episode, we learned about Little Miss History Travels to Mount Rushmore. And this was the first book that Barbara produced in the Little Miss History book series. All the illustrations, and, and when I say whimsical, I mean, I'm, I'm pulling from Barbara's words and the descriptions in the book, but it's actually really cool illustrations. And I think Victor's done a wonderful job of really kind of translating Barbara's uh, vision onto the pages. And so you definitely have to check it out. And we'll provide backlinks to Barbara's website, littlemisshistory.com. And we'll also provide backlinks to the social sites as well as to Victor's uh, illustration sites as well. And of, co of course, we'll have links back to the two episodes we've already done with Barbara and Victor. Okay, okay, folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a wonderful day. When you visit Success Insight Podcasts and specifically this episode or any episodes for that matter, let us know what you think. You know, leave us a comment. And you can also find us on LinkedIn uh, and Facebook on our Success Insight Podcast pages. And we are on the major podcasting platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and especially Spotify, where we actually have taken all of our outdoor adventure series and put them in one playlist. So you can download and have access to just the outdoor adventure series playlist. And of course, you're going to see Barbara Ann's episodes that we've 
are producing with her on Little Miss History Travels to Mount Rushmore. And in the last interview we did where Little Miss History visited Sequoia National Park. So again, wonderful contributions to our Outdoor Adventure Series. Okay, once again, go out there, have a phenomenal day. Take care of yourselves, your family, practice social distancing, wear your mask, and we will see you on another episode of the Success Insight Podcast and the Outdoor Adventure Series. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.